ties at last and resumed the lead, trailed by a second camel carrying Mr. Abbasi, a third carrying Miss Sweeney, and a fourth carrying supplies. The delay had been too long. With such a lackadaisical pace and so many distractions, they were lucky they hadn't encountered any shifta. The bandits, with rows of shiny gold bullets slung around their hips, would surely have killed this willful, white, American woman. What then would be the fate of Mr. Abbasi? Of course, what sort of fate was this anyway? Mr. Abbasi's boyhood dream of an ideal job was one he could do in the shade that required as little physical exertion as possible and even less human interaction. What joy when he discovered there actually existed work that would meet his needs. Some shelving was necessary, of course, but the library's unambiguous rules against talking more than compensated for that light lifting. Now, though, they changed his job requirements. They forced him to travel beneath the unforgiving sun four times a week on these exhausting excursions across the terrain naked except for the occasional thorn bush or acacia. And why? Because foreigners, with fervor in their hearts, decided all children must be educated. The misconception buried in that word set his teeth to grinding. These foreigners couldn't understand that literacy was not the only path to education. In tribal settlements, the tradition was an oral one, bolstered by the evolutionary development of powerful memories, supported by a web of ritual and respect that books would not reinforce could, in fact, destroy. Besides, these people were at peace with themselves. Wasn't that a kind of wisdom? A little rain, a bowl of maize, and they were happy. They didn't desire objects outside their reach. This bookmobile project bred envy of an unobtainable life. Some suitable books were to be found among the donations, of course, but what were a dusty desert people to make of a movie star's biography? A do-it-yourself book for landscapers? <laughs> Their inclusion highlighted Western idealists' underbelly of ignorance and even arrogance.